atoms in your body, the nitrogen, the iron, the carbon, the, all of this are traceable to cosmic crucibles deep in the centers of stars. The James Webb Telescope is one of the major wonders of science. Ever since its launch, not only have astronomers and cosmologists benefited from the immense data JDUSD has collected, but even regular curious folks all around the world have enjoyed the high-quality images it has captured. Now the telescope has broken another record, capturing a real image that allows us to see things the way they were before the Big Bang. What did the James Webb Telescope capture this time? And how did scientists interpret this data? Join us in this video as we explore James Webb Telescope's first ever real image before the Big Bang. Ever since the James Webb Telescope was launched into deep space, it has never failed to unveil mind-boggling discoveries, even more than scientists ever expected. For a long time, we've been interested in knowing how the cosmos works and how it all began. Even though scientists had come up with several theories, thanks to decades of research, there was a need for substantial proof to back these theories. Before James Webb came along, the Hubble Space Telescope was solely responsible for providing cosmologists with snapshots of the universe and bringing to life most of the space phenomena that weren't previously seen. It was launched into the Earth's lower orbit in 1990, and since then, it has captured over 40,000 objects in the cosmos, proving to be a vital research tool for astronomers. Even then, this was barely enough. The Hubble Space Telescope still couldn't capture some parts of the universe, and scientists were very much interested in these regions of space. You see, most of what lies beyond our solar system has already been well known and documented, and so scientists are much more focused on exploring the deep parts of the cosmos, or what is more commonly known as the early universe. James Webb came into the scene to fill this gap. James Webb's primary purpose is to give scientists a peek into the early parts of the universe so we can see the earliest stars, galaxies, and constellations and learn more about what happened in the early moments after the Big Bang. The Big Bang theory is the famous and universally accepted theory that explains the formation of our universe. The theory states that the universe started as a very hot, dense, and tiny point something scientists call a singularity. From this singularity, there came a massive explosion, causing the release of dense matter and energy, which then rapidly expanded. As expansion continued, cooling took place. This expansion and cooling process made the conditions right for the formation of the first stars and galaxies. Subsequent expansion and cooling led to the formation of more complex structures, like the galaxy superclusters observed today. Several lines of evidence, such as Hubble's law, support the Big Bang theory. This law says that distant galaxies are moving away from us, and the farther the distance, the faster they drift away. This law was more commonly known as the law of universal expansion. Scientists have realized the hidden force behind this continuous expansion and have termed it dark energy. Dark energy, as explained by Michio Kaku, is the universe's invisible anti-gravity force responsible for the expansion we've observed over the years. As strange as the universe's expansion may be, it's all thanks to this weird phenomenon that we can estimate the age of the universe as well as other objects in the cosmos. Another interesting thing supporting the Big Bang theory is the cosmic microwave background radiation, popularly called CMB. The CMB is the radiation that fills the entire space in our observable universe. It is the remnant of the intense heat and light that was emitted from the Big Bang, which is why it pretty much fills the entire universe. The cosmic microwave background has always been an important source of data for scientists to learn about the primordial universe. It has a temperature of about 2.7 Kelvin, with tiny fluctuations that reveal the density variations in the primordial plasma. The abundance of primordial elements in space is another strong supporting evidence for the Big Bang theory. You see, a major part of our universe consists of elements like hydrogen and helium. From stars to entire planets, you find these two elements almost anywhere. Scientists have discovered that these elements were the first to form. They were created in the first few minutes after the Big Bang. 
Other light elements like lithium, beryllium, and boron were formed much later, which is why they only occur in small traces in the cosmos. As further proof of this hypothesis, the oldest stars in our galaxy, like the Methuselah, are made solely of hydrogen and helium. In contrast, the youngest stars consist of a bunch of other elements in addition to hydrogen and helium. Another common thing noticed in the cosmos that supports the Big Bang theory is the evolution and distribution of galaxies. Galaxies come in different shapes and sizes and possess varying compositions depending on their location and history. In fact, galaxies are not evenly distributed in space as you would expect. Rather, they form clusters and superclusters. These are gigantic structures consisting of stars and their planets, numbering millions and billions. These structures are evidence that all matter from the early Big Bang was clumped together under gravity to form stars, and since then, the trend has continued, causing the universe to evolve into what it is today. Today, the oldest galaxies are found near the edge of our observable universe, while the younger ones are closer to us. It is these old, faraway galaxies that the James Webb Telescope is dedicated to study. Perhaps by doing so, scientists can visualize how the world was before the Big Bang. But what really happened before the Big Bang? Was the Big Bang all a coincidence? And what caused or formed the singularity in the first place? These are some of the puzzling questions scientists have been battling with for years. We've cracked the code of the birth of time and space, and now we're left solving the mystery of what happened before time and space came to be. Scientists have pondered on this big puzzle for so long and have brought up several plausible theories to explain how the universe was before the singularity and what caused the singularity in the first place. One such plausible theory is the Big Bounce Theory. This theory holds that our universe is part of a cyclical process. In other words, it postulates that a prior universe had collapsed into a singularity, which then exploded or bounced back into a new one. The theory also suggests that this cycle may have repeated itself countless times, and our current universe is just one of the many cycles to come. Another well-known theory proposes that our universe was birthed from the collision of two brains, which are tiny sheets of matter and energy residing in a higher dimensional region. This collision caused a phenomenal event and sparked the creation of a highly dense matter and energy, what we now know as the Big Bang. Another theory states that our universe evolved from a condition of low energy and high curvature into a state of high energy and low curvature. This transition was followed by a period of superinflation and increased quantum fluctuations that created an allowance for the formation of the cosmic structures we see today. These are some of the theories that have come up over the years from various scientists trying to explain what life was like before the Big Bang. A major part of the science community has always believed there is no way the singularity would have formed from nothingness. After all, it's not like you can create a universe in a lab. And so, these theories have tried to tie the Big Bang and the singularity to something. However, one theory that strongly suggests the universe was birthed out of nothing is the no-boundary proposal. This theory postulates that our universe has no boundaries in space or time. In fact, it refers to the Big Bang as a smooth zone in which the universe's size becomes very small. The theory was proposed by scientists Stephen Hawking and James Hartle. Hawking suggested that since the universe is continuously expanding, we could consider the entire scenario in reverse. Doing so will reveal that the universe came out of nothing, except, of course, the singularity that started it all. Hawking explained that by backtracking the universe, you will see that it gets smaller and denser until it finally ends up as an extremely dense and high-energy ball. In this state, the ball would have no other option but to explode and release its contents, hence the Big Bang. Hawking didn't stop there. He explained that as you keep going, the universe becomes smaller and smaller until it becomes a dense, ultra-high-energy ball at the subatomic level. This is how Hawking and Hartle explained the possibility of our universe birthing out of nothing. And so, the no-boundary proposal describes the beginning of the cosmos as a quantum fluctuation from nothingness via quantum physics. Certainly, the no-boundary theory seems to make sense out of all the pre-Big Bang theories scientists have brought up over the years. However, 
The science community can't approve it as the explanation of how our world began. Why? Well, because there's no proof. Remember, at the beginning of this video, we mentioned how most of the Big Bang theories were just theories until the James Webb Telescope came to provide substantial proof that got them approved. The same can be said here. The no-boundary proposal and other pre-Big Bang theories will remain obsolete until we have sufficient proof from the observed space phenomenon. And this is where the James Webb Telescope comes in. Seeing the JWST was born to give us an insight into the early universe, it also holds the potential to reveal what happened before the Big Bang. And with its latest discovery, it seems like James Webb will soon put an end to this mystery once and for all. Interestingly, the JWST has just uncovered the earliest proto-galaxy cluster ever discovered. This galaxy cluster was formed just 650 million years after the Big Bang. This may seem like a very long time in human years, but following the cosmic timeline, it's quite a short time. Our universe is 27 billion years old, and most of the galaxies we see in the cosmos were formed billions of years after the Big Bang. For instance, our Milky Way, one of the oldest galaxies, was formed about 800 million years after the Big Bang. And so, finding a galaxy cluster that was formed much earlier is very interesting. In the early phases of the Big Bang, the universe was almost completely uniform. All matter and energy were spread out uniformly throughout space, with small perturbations overlaying that uniform background. This information is evident in the Big Bang's residual glowing energy, the cosmic microwave background. Scientists believe that molecular clouds of gas, dust, atoms, and dark matter were responsible for the formation of the first stars and star clusters. Some of these took an estimated 200 to 250 million years to form, and they are the earliest to do so. As these stars formed, they emitted radiation and winds, creating complex environments and merging to form the universe's first massive galaxies. The entire complexity of these first structures makes it difficult for scientists to predict many details about them. But now, thanks to the James Webb Telescope, we've discovered some of these early galaxies. Many of these early ones are rich in heavy elements and boast of continuing star formation, meaning they never stopped forming new stars. The JWS is fully committed to discovering these objects, and there is still a chance that the JWST's capabilities will unveil populations of even earlier galaxies on the broader cosmic scale. In case you're wondering how scientists end up knowing so much about the age of these earlier galaxies, it all boils down to understanding the physics of how the universe works. Galaxies are collections of space dust and gas filled with billions of stars and their solar systems. Other things you would notice in most galaxies are the continuous star production, huge star winds, and radiation. Supernova explosions occur occasionally, releasing gas and other atom-based matter, which then cool and contribute to the overall galaxy cluster. One thing that plays a very important role in the creation of galaxy clusters is dark matter. Dark matter is the mysterious substance that fills the entire universe, but has never been seen by scientists or anyone. Galaxies are packed full of dark matter. Through the gas clouds and star formation processes, galaxies leave a kind of unique signal, which scientists can pick up and investigate to learn more about them. It's like an X-ray that's noticed throughout the intergalactic medium within the galaxy cluster. By using the right wavelengths of light, scientists can take advantage of these X-rays to learn about the masses, gas contents, and histories of these galaxy clusters. One of our closest mature galaxy clusters is dated to 2.7 billion years after the Big Bang and contains about 17 distinct galaxies. More than half of these are starburst. A starburst galaxy is one that undergoes a high rate of star formation. It is important to note that galaxy clusters do not begin as mature objects. They evolve from what is called a proto-cluster phase. Scientists have come to realize that proto-clusters of galaxies that haven't yet heated up their gas enough to emit X-rays are part of the several galaxies formed in the early universe. One such cluster, spotted by the James Webb Telescope, consists of 12 galaxies and has a redshift of 6.6. .6. Redshift refers to the extent to which the light of an object in the galaxy has been stretched by the universe's expansion. 
A redshift of 6.6 .6 in this regard corresponds to an age of 800 million years after the Big Bang. But you see, scientists always believed they'd break this cosmic record with the JWST's superior cosmic vision. But it was never meant to be an easy process. It took some time before James Webb finally uncovered these aged galaxies. This is because identifying galaxy clusters entails using a wide-field photometric survey that can cover a large enough area. This takes time. But all the same, the James Webb Telescope made some outstanding discoveries. By examining a narrow part of the cosmos, scientists have luckily found several independent galaxies confirmed to be at a redshift of 7.88. This corresponds to 650 million years after the Big Bang, making them the earliest proto-cluster of galaxies ever identified by James Webb. The aggregate mass of the seven-member galaxies that make up this proto-cluster equates to approximately 400 million suns, nearly the same mass as our Milky Way. But now, the James Webb Telescope has once again shocked scientists with a newly discovered tiny early galaxy. This galaxy dates back to about 500 million years after the Big Bang. This galaxy could be a key to understanding how things were during the cosmic dark ages and the state of things before the Big Bang. This galaxy had a redshift of 9.51, meaning it existed only 510 million years after the Big Bang. Initially, this galaxy appeared extremely faint due to its great distance but its light got boosted by another galaxy cluster located about 2.5 billion light-years from Earth along the same line of sight. This supporting galaxy cluster has a solar mass of 150 trillion. Hence, it easily lit up the proto-cluster and made the light from it more prominent in the JWST. Scientists have been able to decipher some of this galaxy's features. For instance, it measures only 105.6 light-years across, this is quite small compared to other galaxies like our Milky Way, which measures about 100,000 light-years in diameter. Even dwarf galaxies in interstellar space with very low mass and volume measure several thousand light-years. And so it puzzled scientists how this ancient galaxy turned out to be so small in size, despite the fact that it has a much higher volume than our Milky Way galaxy. Another property noticed in this 500-million-year-old galaxy is that it has the same rate of star formation as our galaxy. In other words, it is starburst. The James Webb Telescope has revealed that such high star formation is a characteristic feature of these galaxies that were formed in the early universe. But here's the weird thing. This 500 million year old star has a very small area or diameter, and yet it produces new stars just as quickly as massive galaxies like our Milky Way does. This means that thousands or millions of star formation is compressed into a very small area. All of this verifies the hypothesis that it was smaller galaxies that formed first after the Big Bang before they then merged and developed into larger galaxies like the Milky Way. But this wasn't all that was discovered about this ancient galaxy. It didn't have a black hole or quasar as most galaxies do. This is so because this galaxy was formed at such an early time in the universe. The JWST has already captured a handful of very high redshift luminous galaxies from the early universe, and much more are likely to follow. If this trend continues, scientists will be able to come up with a model that explains what happened before the Big Bang. Thanks to the James Webb Telescope's ability to view the universe in infrared light, it can detect dim light from ancient stars and galaxies. The telescope can see back in time up to 13.5 billion years. Recently, aside from the tiny 500 million year old galaxy mentioned earlier, James Webb also discovered six huge galaxies that existed between 500 and 700 million years after the Big Bang. In regards to this discovery, Joe Layer, the assistant professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Penn State University, pointed out that these objects are much more massive than anyone expected. Scientists expected these six galaxies to be small like the first few discovered. On the contrary, they were as mature as our own. The fact that these mature galaxies were found in the dawn of the universe challenges what many astronomers thought they knew about the cosmos. In fact, they contradict 99 models of the early galaxies previously established by scientists. And many have jokingly named these objects 
universe breakers. Scientists must now reconsider how galaxies form, or at least how they formed in the first million years after the universe banged. Understanding these early galaxies found by James Webb would provide an insight into what the universe was like before the Big Bang. The limit of the JWST so far has been a particular galaxy dated to 320 million years after the Big Bang. This is the farthest the James Webb telescope has ever peered into, and it's pretty much the same thing as if it would have peered back in time to before the Big Bang. Scientists are keeping an open mind about what they see in these faraway regions of space, and they're working hard on the data to find clues that would help create a model that explains the state of things before the Big Bang. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen for more quality content like this one.